guys, Matty Graham here from Exponential Performance Coaching back with another Whiteboard Wednesday. Today I want to answer a question about VO2 max, anaerobic threshold and what the hell do these mean? And why as an athlete you should get a good grasp on these? Often you'll see these two terms thrown around uh, as part of a training plan, different sessions targeting different aspects. So getting a good grasp on what these means is quite important. Now let's have a look at VO2 max to start with. Let's break it down. The V, that stands for volume. <clears throat> O2, if you remember back to chemistry class, that stands for oxygen. And max simply stands for maximum. So what VO2 max is, is it's the maximum volume of oxygen that your body can take in and use. <clears throat> And while this is, why this is important is because during aerobic exercise, we're using oxygen, taking in oxygen, using it in our aerobic energy process to produce energy to fuel us uh, in our exercise. However, if, if you just look at a person's VO2 max, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be a good endurance athlete. But what it does do is it gives you a good snapshot across a broad range of systems in the body. If you have a look over here at the VO2 equation, the volume of oxygen that's being consumed in the body at any one time, even at rest, is a function of cardiac output, which is your heart and the blood that's coming out of your heart, so how efficient your pump is. Also of the concentration of arterial oxygen, so how much oxygen that your that's going across your lung into your blood and that's what's called our pulmonary system and then once that blood goes to our muscle comes out the other side we're interested in the concentration of venous O2 so how much oxygen is in our veins after it's been through the muscle so that relates to muscle factors so VO2 takes into account what's happening at the, with your cardiac system your pulmonary system, so your lungs, and then how efficient your muscles are at extracting the oxygen. So knowing your VO2 max is a good indication of how all of these things are going. And what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of a look um, in a moment about how maybe just because you've got a big VO2 max doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a superstar. Now let's have a look at threshold or anaerobic threshold or lactic threshold. So it's called a bunch of different names. So what we're talking about with our anaerobic threshold is there's a point where our body crosses over, if you like, into primarily anaerobic activity. Now, when our body exercises, it, there's a byproduct called lactic acid or lactate that's produced. This is released into the bloodstream and we can measure this. So if we were to get you set up on a bike or a treadmill, whatever it might be, and got you in exercising and increasing work loads, so if it was on a treadmill, you'd just get faster and faster and faster, or we'd put the gradient up. If it was on a bike, we'd make it harder, increase the wattage. And what you'll see is that low workloads, lactate is quite low. And then you get to a point when you're working so hard, That lactic, that lactic acid in the body starts increasing rapidly until fatigue. And it's this point here that is termed anaerobic threshold. Now, it's a combination of more anaerobic energy being used down at these lower workloads. It was more aerobic, the oxygen was being used, so lactate wasn't being produced. Once you hit this level, there was more anaerobic activity, there was more lactate being produced, and the body wasn't able to deal with it, so it starts to accumulate. Now, lactic acid doesn't cause fatigue, but it is associated with it. So at this point here is the point that you can sustain for quite a prolonged period of time. If you go above it, you start to fatigue rapidly, and you'll need to stop. Now... While this isn't a VO2 max testing protocol, what we can do is VO2 max, so the maximum rate, 
will be up around here somewhere. So what we've got is our threshold here and our max up here. Now if I just get rid of this, we can have a look at a couple of things. Let's try and make this a little bit more simple. So if you can think of VO2 max as just being the size of your engine, just the total engine capacity. So if you think of a car engine. So this is the max, the max rate that your body can consume oxygen, or say the max speed that your car can drive. Just because it's the max, it doesn't mean that you always drive it that fast. So you could have two people, for example, with the same VO2 max as the same maximal engine capacity. This person here may be able to operate their engine at 75% of their max, while this person here may be only able to operate at 50%. On race day, this person's going to be faster. This percentage here is your anaerobic threshold. It's the proportion of your max that you can use functionally and sustainably to exercise at. Just because you've got a massive engine doesn't mean you're going to be a really, really good athlete. But having a high percentage of your VO2 max, having a high percentage of that threshold, is a very, very strong correlator to future performance. So if you can look at increasing your threshold, say this person increases to 80%, the size of their total engine has stayed the same, but they will be faster. Alternatively, you could have this person here have massive VO2 max compared to this person over here, say, who's got a smaller VO2 max. But let's say they can use 80% of their total capacity. Although this person's got the bigger engine, this person has got a higher anaerobic threshold, they're going to outdo this person because they're going to be up here in comparison. So VO2 max is not the be all and end all. A lot of really good endurance athletes have a high VO2 max, okay, but they also have an extremely high threshold. So anaerobic threshold is definitely more trainable compared to VO2 max. There are some small changes you can get in your VO2 max, but these are more just little tweaks or tuning if you like, not huge gains to be made as it's primarily genetically based. Anaerobic threshold on the other hand you can get very very good adaptations in your anaerobic threshold. So even though you may have a small engine, you're able to increase the capacity of it that you can use on race day. And anaerobic threshold is very much a good indicator of future performance. So there you have it, VO2 max and anaerobic threshold. If you're even more confused now than you were, let me know and I can try and explain it slightly differently. Please keep your questions coming so that I can keep giving you the good information so that you can train harder and smarter.